It is time for candid conversations with Tess and we are handling how to deal with loss and grief. In life, many people go through different kinds of losses. Many would assume uh, just after death, but there are many ways in which people experience loss and grief and it is a matter that should be discussed. And joining us in studio tonight is Gakondi Ariane, who I will allow to introduce herself. Karibu. Gakwandi. Thank you so much, Thais. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Yeah. Please tell us about you. Okay, my name is Gakwandi Uizeye Arian. I'm from Rwanda, but I'm married here. My husband's name is Mulunji Samuel. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So let's start by understanding loss and grief. I know from your story, mm. many have heard your story, even here in Hope Media, mm. that you went through loss at a very young age. Yeah. Probably just start by telling us a little about your story, even as you defined for us loss and grief. So Tess, uh, loss and grief is one of the things that affect each and every one in their life. So for me, I lost my parents when I was four years you can understand experiencing loss at that age of four years. At four years, I did not even understand what was going on, you know. So I was like, I was following what other people are going. We went to bury my mom. I wasn't understanding what was happening. And also after one year, my, my dad passed on. So at that age, I wasn't understanding what his loss is. And even sometimes as a young person, you think, my father is going to come back, and yet your father has passed on. But the first time I experienced loss is when I lost my uncle who adopted me after losing my both parent. Let me tell you, when you hear that call, someone tells you that your loved one is, has passed on. The first thing that happened to you is a shock. You are in denial. How can this happen to me? No, it is not true. I remember we received that call. I was with my sister. My sister, she almost collapsed because we could not understand what is going on. There is that denial. You know, you don't, you don't even accept. Is it ha even happening? So the next stage you start now facing is why did it happen to me? God, I lost my both parent when I was four years. And the one you gave me who adopted me, now you have took him away. God, why me? Why I cannot have joy like other people? So there is that thing that comes where you ask yourself question, why me, God? And then the next thing, you start having anger. God, why would you accept these things to happen to me? And some of people will start now drawing away from God because there is that too much question in your heart. God, why would you choose me? Some people will not even stop praying because like, God, how can I go in your presence? And yet you have caused this too much pain in my life. So loss and grief is something that people need to take time to process and take time to grieve because you have lost a loved one. For me, it, has, it was a season of healing and healing. And you have to, don't push yourself because healing is a journey. Step by step, you get it. Mm. But you will reach on the point you say, God, yes, I lost my uncle. Yes, I still trust you because you have a good plan for my life. The moment you reach to that stage means that you have accepted the loss that you have gone through. Since you experienced the loss as a child, mm. maybe there are things that you experienced during that time, a way that people handled you, that you would want to tell them differently. Perhaps tell us what happened to you at that time, that you wish somebody handled you in a better way, that you can advise someone out there who is probably with a child who has lost a parent or both parents, how, what would you tell them how they can help those children deal with loss and grief? First thing I will say that my family did not do for me, and I wish they did, is to sit with me, Tess, and tell me what happened. 
Yes, at that time I was four years. But the moment you reach in your teenagerhood, you can be able to understand the loss and grief. But nobody sat with me and told me what happened. I started to discover on my own. And let me tell you, Tess, it took me 15 years to sit and face the picture of my both parent. Because I couldn't understand what happened to them. So if there is a, maybe you have a child in your family who have lost a loved one, you need to help them grieve. Sit with them and ask them, how are you feeling? What do you understand about loss? Let them grieve. Let them face the, and process the pain they are going through. Because if they don't do that, it will come out in life in a different way. Like for me, when I was in campus, because you understand, I didn't know that nobody sat with me and explained to me what happened to my mom, what happened to my dad. So I used to live in fear. And that came out as fear. I started to experience panic attack and anxiety. I had to seek help. I had to start therapy. So I will urge families, if you're facing loss and grief, and there is some children in the family, please sit with them. If you cannot do, seek for therapy because you have many counselors who, had, who are helping children to process the grief. Help them process the grief so that you can be able to know where to help them. But don't say that, no, for them, they are okay. No, mm -hmm. there is something that has touched them. There's mm -hmm. something that has happened to them. Yeah. I know you have counseled many people, even on the stages of grief. Please tell us, help us understand what are those stages that you went through and have seen many go through in terms of when they have lost a loved one. The first stage, as I said, is denial. You, you are confused. You don't accept. No, my uncle cannot. Because I, let me tell you, my uncle, he used to tell us he can drive a car sleeping and he'll be okay. And now someone is telling me something he used to tell me that he can drive a car sleeping and he'll be okay. Now he, he died in accident. That was confusing for me. There is that denial. No, it cannot happen to me. The second is the anger because you're like, no, why is it happening to me? Why did not God choose another person? You, you get it. You, you, you are asking God questions with anger because you don't understand what is going on in your life. Why, can, why is this happening to me? And the, most of the people come to counseling when they're in the stage of they are depressed. Like you have signs like you are depressed. You are so hopeless. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to talk to anybody. You feel like life has no meaning. So the moment you reach to that point, you find people come for therapy when they find those signs. And I will urge everybody that is watching, if you have lost a loved one, for which we don't wish to anybody, it's one of the painful season and experience that we can never wish to anybody. But please, Talk to someone. Let them help you to process the loss. Because if not, you will get stuck in between because the pain is overwhelming. There is question that you have. Help them, let them, the therapy help you. Even the, your family, your friend. You remember my sister. When I lost my cousin in 2021, I used to come to see you. Pray with me. I am... I, I tell you how I'm feeling in my heart. You know, that used to help me. It used to encourage me. So don't keep, like, don't close yourself and say, it's mine. You know, I don't want to talk to anybody. But let me tell you, there is power in speaking. Talk, find someone you talk to. Let them help you to process the loss so that you can reach on the point of acceptance and say, you know what? I lost my cousin, but there is hope for me. And, to rem and for sure, Tess, you helped me that time. I did not go to seek a therapy. But the way we used to meet and pray together and share with you, you know, I'm scared. This is how I'm feeling. And you encourage me. You give me hope. You need to find a community that gives you hope mm -hmm. in that difficult time. When we think about loss, sometimes we can get lost in terms of we only talk about the loss of our loved ones in death. Mm -hmm. 
But in relationships, people go through breakups. Some people who have even gotten to an extent of paying dowry price or just being in a relationship for a long time, some even seven <laughs> years. And what would you say in terms of losing a loved one who you hoped to be married to? How would someone handle that? Or is it even a loss? Let me tell you. In a society, mm -hmm. people don't speak about a loss when you, have, you are facing a breakup in your relationship. You, you get it. Losing a job is a loss. Losing a relationship, it's a loss. Losing a marriage, it's a loss. Losing a business, you have invested, you're seeing a future, it's a loss. So we tend to ignore those losses and we, 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 we feel like, no, I will, I will get through it, you know. But let me tell you this. I remember before I got married in 2017, I was in relationship with someone and we there is commitment. We meet with people. I'm getting married to this lady, presenting me, you know, next year we are getting married. You see, you start to see hope. There is hope. I'm getting married to this person. There is connection. You start bonding together. And then one day, someone calls you. You know what? We can, things cannot work out between us. Let's quit. You know that, what does it mean? Your hope has been cut off. You had hope. You are looking forward for next year. I'm getting married. It's not, long. It's not, it's not happening. You see, it's a shock in the mind. You st I remember my boyfriend calls me, my ex-boyfriend. He calls me and says, you know what? We won't get married next year. And I'm like, no. You are in denial. The same thing. You mm. are in denial. No, it can't happen. Mm. Why? You start getting angry. Why did you do that for me? You caused pain in my life. You, you get it. Mm -hmm. And you start even regretting. I should not have accepted that invitation. Mm -hmm. I should not have accepted, you know, to end a relationship with you. Even maybe you have gone into the ratio. I should not have gone through that. So mm -hmm. there is that regret that you start going through. You get it. But when you don't deal with that and you go into another relationship, you start projecting pain to other people. You enter with fear. You enter with pain because you have not processed the previous pain. So someone may love you, but you don't understand. You are scared. You start projecting pain. So I will encourage someone. If in Kiswa they say, yeah. please take time to grieve. Mm. Take time to face that pain. I remember after that when I break up with my ex, I went to Rwanda and I start searching my purpose. It's like finding purpose in that pain. In that midst, the, 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 the time you are so confused, things are so tough. Find purpose in that. I remember the things I did after I break up with my ex-boyfriend is the things that I'm doing today. I discovered my purpose in my pain. I discovered... I started to know myself. My relationship with God becomes strong and strong because I was like, God, heal my pain. So the, day, the moment I met my husband who I'm married to, wow. I could understand this yeah. is love, you know. I have taken time to heal. I have taken time to face the, the reality mm -hmm. of my life. You, you get it. Mm -hmm. So the time you get to meet with the right person, you are able to love them mm -hmm. and they're able to love you back. Mm -hmm. So it is important to grieve. Don't say that because it's relationship. No, I will just move on. No. Because let me tell you, Tess, what some, some of the cause of depression nowadays is relationship. Someone comes in your office, I'm so depressed. My boyfriend left me. The way I trusted this person, mm. now there is no hope. I feel like I want to end my life. You should not end your life because of someone. Mm. Let me tell you, mm. nothing happened for an accident. I remember back in 2017, I felt like my life is ended. I will never get married. But see my life, mm. what God has done. Let me tell you, your current situation is not your final destination. Don't make the permanent decision in your mm. painful time. Mm. Let me tell you, find someone to talk to. I will emphasize on that. Mm. When you talk about find someone, there's someone out there mm. feeling suicidal. Mm. 
and they don't feel like they have a safe space to share what they are going through. Where did you find people to walk with you in that journey? Just help someone be able to locate where they can find help because someone might say, maybe my family does not understand me. Advise someone. Let me tell you, nowadays counseling is, you can find the service of counseling everywhere. And even here at Sitam Badod, we have counseling center. Mm. Let me tell you, if you come to my office as a counselor, whatever we are going to discuss mm. is between me and you. Mm. I am not judging you. I am not here to judge you, but I'm here to help you mm. process the pain that you're going through. Mm. That's why I'm sitting here as a counselor. So don't be shy. Don't feel like this person is going to see what I'm feeling from inside. Let me tell you. Open up will help you. But keeping things from inside will start to kill you from inside and you start projecting. Let me tell you, sometimes you find people in the society, that they are projecting anger. You tell them something, they get agitated. It's because there's some things they, they are dealing with mm. from within, they haven't get time to process it. So let me tell you, if you are there and you are listening to us, let me tell you, here at Sitam Valley Road, we have counseling center. Come and seek help. Talk to someone. If not, for example, Tess, you are my friend. You get it. You are my sister. Find a friend and tell them, this is what I'm going through. But if you do not trust them, don't open up. Mm. Because you can get hurt when you open up to someone you don't trust mm. and you hear your story all over the place. Mm. But the moment you come and see a therapist or a counselor, they will be able to keep your secret and help you to process the loss that you're going through. Talking about purpose, I love the fact that you said that your pain of that breakup led you to your purpose. Tell us about finding your purpose, and I know you're even an author. How did you come up with how to cope with life challenges? I remember after the breakup, let me tell you, Tess, I sat in my room and I asked myself. I, was, I used to cry every day, every day, and one day I asked myself, is, it God, is this the decision I'm making for my life? Because if I want to remain in pain, is this what I was born to do? Because the moment you focus on pain, you don't see the beauty in the pain. And I ask myself, what can I do? There is something that you have that you can do. You get it? And I remember, start to remember how I love helping people. I love serving God. And going back to do that which I love most, it brought joy in my heart. Mm. Starting serving God, not focusing on my pain, but trying to find my pain in my purpose. Because let me tell you, when you are in pain, you think. Mm. When you are in joy, in love, you mm. don't see anything. But let me tell you, in pain, mm. you can use your pain to go far. Because I remember the Hope Mentorship Program I have, I wrote it in my pain. Wow. The things I wanted to do to mm. serve God in children's home, mm. to serve God in high school, it was born in my pain. Some people choose to remain in the stage of depressed. Because so and so left me, life has no meaning. Because so-and-so did this for me, has, let me tell you, mm. you have a great purpose. Ask yourself this question, which legacy do I want to leave? Mm. What do I want people to remember about me? I want people to remember that I made an impact. I impacted the next generation. Not to allow my pain to put me down, but to use my pain mm. and allow God to use it for his glory. Amen. I see time is kind of spent so now i'll just ask you to please look at that camera and speak to someone who is dealing with loss and pain and grief and they don't know where to go you know you speak from a point of experience and a point of knowledge so please advise someone out there if you're watching us let me tell you there is a hope for you it does not matter where you are at right now your current situation is not your final destination. I want you to surrender that pain, you know, that pain to God.
Nothing is impossible with our God. Let me tell you, God healed my heart. God turned my life around. And he has made the, what seems to be shameful and painful to become a purpose and a blessing to other people. Let me tell you, you do not know what God is planning to do for you tomorrow. Your today, your tomorrow is better than today. Do not give up. And let me, let me tell someone who is watching us. If you want to speak to someone or you want to seek a therapist or a counselor, please, here at Sitam Valley Road, we have a counseling center and it is free. Please make your ways here. And let me tell you, you will never regret it. Thank you so much. And how can people get your book in case somebody wants to read? Okay, they can contact me on uh, Facebook because it's not yet on Amazon, for which I'm hoping that it will be there. Mm -hmm. They can contact me on uh, Facebook, Gakwandi Alian, or they can even contact me on my phone number. Okay. Or they can even come here at Sitam Valley Road. Uh, great, yeah, thank great. you so much. Well, there you have it, Gakwandi Alian. I have nothing more to say other than highlight the fact that she said, turn your pain into purpose. Your grieving is not the end.